Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is October the 6th in the year of our Lord, 2017. And this is one a day for the soul. Now, I trust that you are feeling blessed this morning, that joy is in your heart and praise is upon your lips. We're continuing our look at the book of Job, and today we're going to look at chapter two. Now, it begins by saying, again, there was a day. So again means for the second time, there was a day when the sons of God, being the angels, came to present themselves before the Lord. Satan also came to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence do you come? And Satan answered and said, Going to and fro in the earth, walking up and down in it, looking for someone to destroy, looking for some chaos to create. And the Lord says unto Satan in verse 3, Have you considered my servant Job? Now this is a repeat of what took place in chapter 1. But this time... It seems that God begins to poke at Satan a little bit because he says there's none like him in all the earth. He is a perfect and an upright man. He fears God. He shuns evil. And still, he holds fast his integrity. That's kind of like, and I told you so, God is saying unto Satan. He says, even though you've attacked him in such a furious, violent way, still, he holds fast his integrity. Still, he is perfect. Still, he is an upright man that fears God and shuns evil. Although you moved me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thy hand now, touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. So Satan is relentless in his attack against the Almighty and against Job. And he says, well, if you'll give me the opportunity, not just to affect the things around Job, but to attack his person, to physically ail his body, to bring him much suffering and agony and pain, then he will curse you to your face. And so God says in verse five, put forth your hand now. Touch his bone and flesh. You can do whatever you want to his body, but do not take his life. Now, I want you to notice here that Satan can only do what God allows him, what God permits him to do. Even in his attack against God, trying to defy God and dethrone God, take his position Satan is limited because he can only do that that God allows. And so in the case here of Job, God says you can touch him. You can bring sickness, pain, suffering, and misery. You can bring him to the brink of death, but don't you dare take his life. And so verse 7 tells us, Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord without hesitation, without waiting a moment. He smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown, from the sole of his foot, friends. Think about that. That's the bottom of your body to the top of his head. Satan didn't waste an inch. And verse eight tells us that Job took pieces, shards of glass and pottery to scrape himself. And he sat down among the ashes. Have you ever had a sword that was in the healing process and the only comfort you could get by was scratching it? That's what we see taking place here. Job, the only comfort he can find is in scratching these sores, these boils. And so his wife sees him in his misery and she says unto him, why do you retain your integrity? Why do you still trust in God? I understand why you were faithful to God when you could see the blessings from him in your life, but now there's no evidence of him in your life. And so you should simply curse him and die. But Job said unto her, you speak as one of the foolish women speak. What? 
Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Isn't that often the first way that we sin? We attack God foolishly. We blame God. We question God. Yet in all of this, Job did not sin with his lips. Instead, he pronounced a very important truth when he says, shall we receive good only at the hand of God? Shall we not receive evil from the hand of God? You see, he is God. We are men. He is creator. We are the created. And so we're not to question him. We're not to doubt him. We're certainly not to curse him, but we're to trust him knowing that even as painful as the situation may be today, the day of blessing lies just ahead if only we'll remain faithful. Now, it is at this point in the book that we see the introduction to the three friends that are going to become the main characters of the remainder of this book. And so it tells us in verse 11, when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that had come upon him, they came every one from his own place, Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Naamathite, for they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. And so when they lifted up their eyes afar off, they did not know him. His body had been so disfigured by the boils and the sores and the attack from Satan that they did not even recognize their friend. And so they lifted up their voice and they wept. They tore everyone his mantle. They sprinkled dust upon their heads. And they sat down with him for seven days and seven nights and did not speak a word unto him. For they saw that his grief was very great. You know, sometimes when we know someone is grieving, maybe they've lost a loved one, we find it uncomfortable to be around this person because we don't know what to say. And what we learn from this story is that's okay. Because the person that is grieving really doesn't want to hear what you have to say. They just want you to be there, to love them, to sit with them. Your presence is enough. You are communicating more by being there than anything that you could say. And so rather than avoid these situations, because these people that are going through these difficult times need us so much, Rather than avoid them just because we don't know what to say, I would encourage you just to be there, to love them, to say nothing, because that's going to speak the loudest. Well, friends, we're going to close there today. But as we close, I want to look back at the significant verse in this passage. It's in verse 10. When Job's wife tells him, curse God and die. And Job says, you speak as a foolish person. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Shall we not receive evil? The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. And in all things and at all times, blessed be the name of our Lord. Hallelujah, friends. Well, I'm so glad you're again with us today. This has been the last two days have just been a brief introduction into a book that is filled with so much truth and so much wisdom. It's almost as a foundation needed to be laid before we actually get into the book. But here's what we know. We know that God is testing Job to see how true he'll be when he has nothing. And Job is in the most dire time of his entire life. And three of his friends have come to comfort him. And tomorrow we're going to begin a conversation that's going to take place over the next 38 chapters between Job and and his two friends. So I would encourage you to read Job chapter three, and we'll attempt to look more closely in our next time together at what God would have us to learn from that chapter. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you, and I'll see you on the next video.